Today we're going to talk about testing our iNotify property changed interface classes. So everything we implemented iNotify property changed on, we need to actually write tests to make sure that we have done that correctly and that we've covered all the cases. Uh, this is especially important because if we messed up somewhere in there, if for some reason we're not notified of a property changing, uh, that's not something that will show up as an error when we're compiling. It won't throw runtime errors when we're running the program, but what it will do is it potentially means that our user interfaces that are bound to those particular properties may not properly update and display information uh, from that uh, data class that it is presenting. And that can be a real tricky problem that can actually cause a lot of problems down the road. So we want to make sure that we have done a good job. And one of the best ways that we can do that is exhaustive testing. So I've gone ahead and started a test class for the angry chicken, looking at just the property changing and the property change tests. And I've laid out which ones we need to look at. We basically have in the angry chicken two properties that we can change. That is the bread property and the pickle property. When we change those properties, that changes the property itself, but it also will change the special instructions because each one of those, uh, if we set them to false, we'll say hold bread or hold pickle in the special instructions. And if we set them to true, we will say uh, to, uh, we'll take that out of the special instructions. So we want to make sure that we have covered uh, all of the properties that can change. The other properties of the angry chicken, the price, the calories, those do not change, so we don't need to worry about those. Uh, they're go always going to be constant, so in this case, we don't need to worry about them. In our other classes, that's not the case, but our sides and our drinks, they change both price and calories when their size is changed. So we have to write for the specific class that we're looking at. Now, before we get too deep into this, I'll show you a couple details about my angry chicken and how I've implemented that. Notice that I don't have the iNotify property interface here. I've done that in the base class. So inheriting from this base class, we have the base class gives us both the IOR and, I, and the iNotify property changed. You may have done that in your Angry Chicken class. If you did, that's fine. These are just different ways of implementing the same strategy. Uh, the other thing I have here is I did define a helper method for triggering those property changed events. So I wrapped this property changed, which can be a bit of typing involved in a much simpler method named invoke property changed. It takes a string, which is the property that is changing the name of it, and we pass that into our property changed event args. And then I've also made this helper method protected, which means it can't be used by other classes except for this entree class and any derived classes. That includes our angry chicken. So in our angry chicken, when we want to invoke that, we just use that helper method. And that just cuts down on the amount of typing we need to do, makes it a little bit cleaner and easier. So let's come in here. Start looking at our tests. So the very first test we want to do is we want to make sure that our angry chicken implements the iNotify property changed interface. Uh, what we really mean there is we want to know, can we cast this or is this an iNotify property changed? Can I treat it as though it was an iNotify property changed interface? So we're going to write our first test for this, and it will be a fact. And no return type. And we'll go ahead and use the name should reflect what it's checking. So we'll say angry chicken should implement I notify property changed. And again, this is a fact, so it has no argument. We're going to go ahead and create ourselves a angry chicken variable. And of course, in order to build the angry chicken, we need to make sure we have that Cowboy Cafe data theme space in there. Okay, once we have our angry chicken, we're ready to look at its type. Now there are a couple different methods that are uh, with our assert that we can use to look at types. Uh, one is the is type. This one actually checks if the most derived type or the actual type of the object is the specific type. So that won't tell us if, if it implements an interface because an interface would be a derived type. So instead, what we want to use is uh, the 
is assignable from. And this just basically says, can I treat this as another type, or can I cast this to another type? Is that a legal cast? And of course, the type we're interested in is the I notify property changed interface. And remember, that comes from the system component model namespace, so you need to make sure you have that using statement as well. And then we'll pass in the class that we want to see. So this will basically check to see, does that chicken uh, exist and can we assign it uh, to that variable or to that type. So let's go ahead and take a look at our test explorer. So here I have that new test we just wrote. Let's go ahead and give it a run and see if we can pass. And indeed we do pass. So we can uh, say for sure that we implemented that interface. So for our next test, we'll also make this a fact. And what we want to know is, can we change the bread property and have that trigger or invoke a property changed event? And actually, I'll just say changing bread should invoke property changed for bread. And we start off again by creating an instance of the angry chicken. We'll store that in the chicken variable. And then we need to do another assertion here. And actually, this assertion, the checking to see if a property changed event happens, is such a common test that we actually have an entire assertion method devoted to that, which is assert property changed. Now notice our first argument is an object of type I notify property changed. That would be our chicken. Our second is the property we want to see if it's changing. So that would be bread as a string. And then third is an action. So we'll go ahead and put in our chicken and the string bread. And the third one is an action code, which is a kind of delegate. And we're going to specify that using lambda syntax. So all a delegate is is a method that we are that C# -sharp kind of wraps up in a uh, specialized object structure so that we can pass it as an argument. And the lambda syntax is a simplified way of writing that. So you could actually write a, a delegate method and pass in the name of that delegate method or we can do this lambda syntax which is really what I prefer for this kind of thing. And this basically is a method, so we have our parentheses where our arguments are going to go. We have this arrow, which is composed of an equals and a greater than sign. And then we have the body inside of these curly braces. Inside this body, we need to do whatever action would cause that property to change. So in other words, we need to take our chicken property and set its bread to something different. Now, by default, bread is true, and we've actually tested this in our unit tests. So we know when we construct a new ch angry chicken, its bread property should be true. So we should be able to set it to false here, and that should change uh, that property. Now, if we pull back over our test explorer, we can run that brand new test we just wrote, and we'll see if this will actually pass. And it does, which tells us that uh, we've covered our bases there. Let's do our next one. So changing bread should invoke property change for special instructions. So again, we'll create a chicken variable to hold a new instance of angry chicken. And we'll do the assert dot property changed again. But this time for special instructions. But we will again just be changing the bread property, which should trigger a change in the special instructions. And we also need to mark this as a fact. 
And you could potentially put these into a single theory with two arguments coming in. First, these special instructions, and second, the bread. That's another valid approach. Uh, so you can do these a number of different ways. Let's go ahead and run that test and see if we've got that one passing. And this one fails, which means it's time to go back and double check our test and also double check our code. If we come down in here to our code, notice that we're invoking property change for bread, but we are not doing so for special instructions. It's a very easy to overlook things as we're doing this. This is part of why we go ahead and write all these tests. So we'll go ahead and add special instructions there. And if we run that test again, this time it should pass. Which it does. Okay, so that's four of our six tests. Our next ones are a couple more properties. The pickle property for both changing its own name and changing its special instructions. Just like with the bread, the chicken pickle property is true by default, so we will go ahead and set that to false here and run our test and make sure that that one passes. And we have another failure. The property pickle was not set, so we'll take a look at our code. This all looks good in our test if we jump back to our angry chicken. Look at this pickle property. Notice we have a typo in pickle. So, again, typos are very easy to make in these instances because these strings are not uh, auto corrected for us by uh, IntelliSense, the same way that for the property name would be if we were invoking it directly. So, we need to be cautious about those. We need to double check, and we really want to have a good set of tests. And it looks like this time we're passing. All right, one last test. So this will also be a fact. This time we're going to look at the special instructions. And through the magic of video editing, we can almost just snap our fingers and it's done. Uh, we can go ahead and run that test. And that one passes. Uh, one other thing I did notice that I had another typo up here. This should actually be for pickle in this particular test. We want to make sure that those names reflect what we're testing. And in this one, we're testing the pickle property. Down here is we're testing the special instructions. So that is all of the properties we need to test for the angry chicken. You're going to have to look at each one of your classes in turn and decide what needs to be tested and make sure that you test each and every one of those properties that when they change, they do indeed uh, do what we expect. All right, that's all for today. Have yourself uh, a good time working on this and keep yourselves healthy.